Okay, so you release that song you've been working on. First of all, congratulations, that's a big deal. What do you do with the song file when you're done? Do you delete it? Do you just turn your back on it and never look at it again? Both of those are valid options. For me, I'd always like to get back to it in case I want to revisit it one day, or there's a sound in there that I'd like to use in another song, or I want to do a remix, or post it inside a, a, the the Studio One members area to like have people do a remix of it. There's any number of ideas why I might want to maintain access to this song, but the problem is, take a look at this. This is this is the most recent song I released. It's It's almost nine gigabytes of files. And I have a sneaky suspicion that the song isn't actually nine gigabytes worth of audio. So where what's the difference? Is it a Studio One problem? Did Studio One mess me up? No, of course not. It's just that over the course of recording this song, this song in particular, I did a bunch of different versions. I, tr I recorded a bunch of stuff, and then I would delete it, and I would record some other stuff. And what happens is if I record a piece of audio, and it's sitting there in Studio One, I click on it, and I press backspace or delete. It goes away, but it's not actually delete it. It actually still lives inside of the media folder inside of the song folder. So you don't, if you don't know what that's like, the way Studio One manages its files, this is the folder for that particular song. And there's a bunch of stuff that lives just automatically inside of that folder. One of those, the biggest one usually is this media file. It sounds like I'm saying meaty, like it's a meaty file. Um, and as you can see here, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of files in here. Uh, there's other things that can make it fairly big, like if there's a whole bunch of mix downs. Um, this one happens to have a video associated with it, which I'm actually not using in this version. So that might that's a big contributor to the big size. So what do I do? What do I do in this situation? There is so well. The first question would be: Is does it matter? And if you have unlimited storage space and space on your hard drives is not an issue, or you just you don't mind buying a new hard drive every once in a while because they keep filling up, more power to you, that's great. I get annoyed with having to buy new hard drives just because I'd rather just keep what I have. Um, so for me, I like to squash this down in file size so that it doesn't take up as much space, so I can fit more stuff, uh, because a lot of the stuff that are that's in there of that eight gigabytes of information there's probably not a, there's probably a lot of it there that's not actually a part of the song. So what do you do? The main thing I like to do, and at bare minimum, I will do this. First thing is come to open up the song, come to song, and then come here to there's an option called remove unused files. So if you click on that, it pulls up this window. Now, a couple of words of warning, and my friends in tech support will be thankful that I say things like this. This is potentially a dangerous situation because if I, right now, all of these are selected, and there's kind of two options for how to remove them. I can say yes here, and it will remove them in the sense of this song no longer has them listed as a part of the song, but all the underlying audio files still exist. Um, there's a reason for that. We're not going to talk about that today. The other option is to, if I check this box, which is not checked by default, which is a good safety mechanism. If I check the box that says delete files permanently, it is going to delete these files, you guessed it, permanently. So why would I want to do that? That's when I'm trying to get rid of the extraneous file. So right now, this list of files here, I don't know how many it is, I don't know if it gives me a count, but it's a fair number of big chunky wave files that I'm not using in this song. So why are they there? Well, things like uh, I recorded my son playing clarinet. We did a few takes. And if he did a take he didn't like, we just deleted it. Well, the audio is still here. It still lives inside the folder. Um, same with I brought in a bunch of different... Um, different piano samples. Uh, as a Studio One Plus member, I have access to a lot of cool piano samples, and I brought some of those in to try things out, and sometimes I rendered them down, but then I unrendered them because I wanted to go change something, and so there's just a lot of stuff in here that I've worked on. However, when I look through this, what's great about this is it shows you the path of each file. So you can see it's in it's in my home folder, it's in my documents, my Studio One, my songs folder, under Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So that gives me a good indication that I'm probably pretty clear to delete these. The places where this gets funky is if you tend to pull in a bunch of files, like audio files and samples and sound effects and things like that. Let's say I have a folder in my Dropbox account, and that folder has symbol swells in it. Actually, let's do that right now. I want to show you something. Um, I do have a folder like that. Let me find it real quick. Hold, please. Okay, here's that folder. This is just some cymbal swells I recorded years ago, and I use them all the time. If I were to drag this into Studio One and use it, so there it is. It's this, it's this pink file here. 
And then I said, you know what? It doesn't work. Never mind. Let me just delete that. I'm going to delete the whole track altogether. And I move on with my life. Okay. If I save this, first of all, it's going to ask me, do you want to copy these external files to the media folder? This is a setting where inside preferences, you can tell it to ask every time you hit save. If there's new audio files, do you want to save them? I say the answer should always, always be yes. But let's say for some reason your answer is no. Because maybe you pull from the same folder a lot. You don't want bunches of copies of that file. Because this is going to copy that WAV file from that Dropbox folder into this session. So maybe you don't want that extra for whatever reason. So I say no. Okay. So now, um, if I were to come in here... Let's go back to our song, remove unused files window. You'll now notice if we, if we zoom in and just kind of quickly scroll, we will see, aha. So everything in this song is inside this folder for the songs. It's all associated with this song, except here. There is that swell file is still linked to this song. Even though I brought it in and deleted it, it's still linked there, um, which helps me like if I accidentally delete something, I can find it somehow. Um, but now if I hit delete files permanently and I say yes, it's going to delete this file out of my, I guess this is in my downloads folder, out of my Dropbox folder, and it'll be gone forever. So that's why you have to be careful here. So when doing this, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect everything. I'm going to select this one, and right now the question is, do I want to remove these unused files? The answer is yes for this one. I don't want it to be deleted. I just want it removed, disassociated from this song. That's all, that's all well and good. Now I come back to the remove unused files window. Now I can see everything in this song is now inside of this, this particular folder. So I feel safe going through and deleting it now. So I select yes, delete all files permanently. I wonder if it has the video file in here. Did anybody see that? I don't think it does. So the video may be a different, it's a horse that most of us aren't using videos, myself included. So I say, yes, it works very briefly. Now let's come back over to finder and let's take a look. Check it out. Hark the Herald, three and a half gigabytes. So we, we cut this down by almost a two thirds, I think at least a half of, there was just extraneous files in there. So we've made this a lot smaller, which means we can do twice as many songs. Uh, without having to change out our hard drives. So that's the first thing I do when I'm finished with a song, just to make the file size smaller so I can do more music without having to be hassled with hard drive stuff. The next thing I like to do is I want to come in and render any unused, um, any, sorry, render, I'm sorry, I removed the unused. I want to render any virtual instruments down to actual audio files. There's a number of reasons why I like to do this, but the main one is, let's say I used a cool synth plugin and let's say it was free. Somebody gave me a free synth plugin and I used it and it sounds amazing. And let's say I come back three years from now and I open this song and that plugin doesn't work anymore. And that company went out of business and doesn't make that plugin. I can't get that plugin anymore. Guess what? I'll never hear that sound again unless I do this. So on any sort of virtual instrument, you can see I've already done it here. Like let's take, for example, this P there's a piano in here, here. This is a, just a piano in studio one. But what I did is I right clicked on the channel and I chose transform to rendered audio. Okay. And that transformed what was a MIDI track into rendered audio, meaning it bounced it down to audio. That means if that plugin disappears forever, I can still hear this piano. That's a good thing. Okay. That's the second thing I like to do. The third thing I like to do, and this one I'm not as good as about doing, but it's handy to do is I will come to song export stems and I will make sure to export all the tracks in this song. So this is just for the sake of, even if I, let's say I, I, I'm on another system, right? Let's say I export this as, this is gonna export all the tracks in my song. And let's say I put it in my Dropbox folder to back it up, to have it forever. And I'm at another studio across the world and they don't happen to have Studio One, which is just terrible. Um, and after judging them for that, I say, well, I do want to bring these tracks in because I want us to work on a new version of this song. We can pull these raw audio files in with no problem. So it's really simple. You just you can give it a prefix if you want. It can be like the song title. I typically don't do a prefix. Um, you can upload to Studio One Plus if you're a Studio One Plus member. But this, if I hit OK, it's going to do like a, it's just like export mix down, except it's doing it for every single track in the session. So depending on how big your session is, it might take a minute to export, but then it plops all of these into a single folder 
They're all the same size files. You can drag them into any audio system forever and always uh, because it's just a basic, and I would recommend just using a regular wave file. So th- this is kind of a, this is a future-proof kind of archival thing that I like to do because, you know, God forbid Studio One doesn't exist 20 years from now, but I want to go back to that song that I recorded, right? I recorded this song with my kids. So let's say it's it's my daughter's wedding, and I want to do a new version of this song with her singing it as a 30-year-old versus her singing it as a 10-year-old. Um, but the but Studio One is gone. I shouldn't say that, but uh, so I have I'm using you know some sort of VR mixing platform. Chances are that thing is still going to use WAV files, and I can bring those audio files in, and I can pull up what I did 20 years ago, and it'll work just fine. If I say if I don't save them as actual audio files, and it's only saved as a Studio One file, then I won't be able. If I if for if at some point that file becomes corrupt or something happens and I can't open it anymore, I never get to have those songs or those files again. So this it's just a, it's the same with when I use an app for taking notes or anything like that, I like to regularly back up what's in that file to just a normal document, like a PDF document, that I know I'll be able to read, or at least I have the best chance of being able to read that 50 years in the future. Um, But I'm not so sure if that specific song file, for example, will open in 20 years. I can always know that I have at least the raw files, if nothing else. So those are that's my process for wrapping up a song once it's done, just to make sure I can always get back to it if I ever want to. And it doesn't take that long. If I'm not babbling for however long I've been talking in this video, it really is like a couple of minutes and you've done all of this and you can kind of rest easy that your song has been preserved. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.